Hello everybody and welcome back on ISL Farm. It's late summer and I wasn't quite sure whether our grass was going to grow to any decent height uh, before we were going to have to start uh, harvesting the grain instead but looking at it this morning it's actually quite a nice lush size. Now it isn't particularly windy or uh, drying weather today but that's actually okay because as I mentioned uh, in the previous episode, we're going to make silage out of this and then we're going to use the corn uh, up in the top field for pig feed instead. So today is a job and the job is to get on with making some silage. So we're going to head back to the farm. Oh yeah, um, this is the tree that we took down in the last episode. Um, it's not the prettiest stacking but it's in the back of the truck at least rather than um, lying around up there. So. Today we're basically just going to get um, a team going, we're going to get a cutter and uh, probably just run the liner right behind it and uh, then a uh, forage wagon and then we're going to get it all dumped in and uh, we get one of our larger tractors also to to compress it. Might have to put the twin tires back on the T7 I guess. Uh, wasn't really planned, but um, we might give that a shot. But I think the first thing is to start getting some grass into the pit. And for that, we're going to need going to need something to run. Well, we're going to use one of the T7s to run the mower because we can uh, put cutters both on front and back. And then we're probably going to use the 6R here um, to run the liner, and then one of these two guys. Maybe, maybe we'll run the other T7 on the forage wagon and use the 8R for compression. No, actually, the other way around, because we have a blade um, that will help level off the silage bit. So we'll run the forage wagon on the 8R. But um, let's get the T7 up, and um, this one's got plenty of fuel in it, so it's just a matter of getting it over to the shed. Get the cutters hooked up on it. We'll get the liner out as well, and uh, we'll be ready to rock in not too long, I hope. That's our mower at the ready. Next one up will be the 6R for the liner. So technically speaking, the liner is obviously wider than the cutter, but I think we're just going to run it uh, right behind anyway. Let's see if yeah, we'll manage on that fuel for now might actually have to think about refilling now that we're running the increased fuel consumption but it should work out so we'll get a line hooked up on this mower and line already and then we just need the 8R to come out So that's our full line of the setup for today. So we're just going to get them all uh, over to the field now. That's our crew ready, forage wagon on the go, line on the go, and uh, it's getting rather noisy around here because the mower is going as well. So we're going to be up front, um, starting to mow. Now the one thing we will have to keep um, an eye on is how quickly the forage wagon fills up, uh, because obviously the rest of the line is going to have to stop uh, while we run grass back over to the silage pit and uh, it'll be interesting to see how much we've got. We did get the slurry put down on this field so hopefully we're getting a half decent yield from it but um, we'll have to wait and see. Let's see if we can get a slightly more distant view of things. 
as the chain is moving down the field here. So once we've done this first line, we got a slightly better idea of how long we got to go before before the um, first wagon is full. And we also have to keep an eye on the speed because I think we can actually cut faster than we can line. So what I might do here is to drop, I think the speed of the liner is about 17. So we'll put a uh, auto pilot on here so we don't run too far ahead on, on things. And so that's the first lot filled up here. The um, wagon's filled on, on less than one line here, so it's time to head back and dump the first 42,000 litres of grass out. Now because it's being piled up in a line, I don't think we're in major risk of the grass drying out to hay just while we're doing this run, but um, we don't want to cut too much and, and run the risk of starting to pick up hay. When we were trying to make hay, it took a long time to dry, but yeah, we never quite know. But the barley over here on, on the other field is, is starting to look really good as well. I think it's very close to being ready. So either the last day of late summer or more likely the first day of autumn, um, we're going to get into some serious combining on the fields around here as well. And then uh, later in autumn, the corn up on the top field should be ready as well. So um, we'll have to think about whether we are we're buying or, or leasing the corn header for that. I am leaning towards buying one since we made a decent amount of money out of um, uh, cutting down trees during the summer. And frankly, uh, since we are planning to, to run some more pigs and have some more corn for feed, uh, we probably are going to be needing it. But let's get down to the pit and get the first load tip. So I think this time around we'll use the inner of the two pits, not that it matters a whole lot. Uh, we used the other one before, but um, let's give this one a shot this time. I don't expect to be filling it up, but nonetheless we want to start from the back at least and uh, not just dump it completely randomly if we can help it. We'll try and make some decent, not too tall piles. We do have a level up. Um, that we'll be running anyway, so it shouldn't be too bad. We might have to run it after we get the first few loads in, just to even things out a bit. But for now, it's back to the field. So we're back up to where we left off. We'll just um, pick up the first little bit here, drop the collector on the forage wagon, and uh, start picking up until we get right up to the line here. What I might try to do is the default distance on follow me is 25 meters. Um, I'm going to try and shorten that down to 15. That makes it a little bit easier for us uh, to keep an eye on things. But we should basically be good to go again. Once again, our second load is ready. So we're going to hop in and cancel out the worker and head down with our second load.
there's the second load coming in. I reckon we're gonna try and get three or four strips in and then we'll um, start getting the leveler uh, in to do a bit of work here as well. So we can get it right up against the back wall there and maybe keep it a little bit tighter to the wall this time around. Made a bit of a mess of the first line there. Excellent. There we go. So we're just on our way up to pick up the third load here. And um, it's great to have this 8R to do this kind of stuff. It's, it's completely unhindered um, by, by pulling the size of wagon or, or the load or anything like that. But one thing I have noticed now that we put increased fuel consumption on is that it's, it's actually ticking down fairly quickly. So um, I think it's a bit more realistic. We're gonna have to start keeping a little bit of a close eye on, on fuel bars in general. And uh, I think that's very much also gonna be the case probably for the combine. Oh, that was quite a long line. I hadn't realized we'd missed out quite so much here, but um, we'll get it collected and get back on the line. third load and uh, we haven't actually made it one round entirely so that's basically it's 120,000 liters of grass plus a bit 126,000 liters of grass just on one round of this so I think we should be getting a healthy amount of, of silage out of this field that's for sure I'm going to try and get the third load down the middle here. Um, these two rather uneven lines I created to begin with. That should be totally doable. Now, too much bumping around. Although there's a little bit. So we'll get one more load in and then it'll be time to start leveling it off a bit so that the following loads will be able to get dumped on top rather than uh, all over the place. back out to the field we'll get a little bit of leveling done as well so I think the key thing at this stage of the leveling is really just to try and start creating a, a smooth surface and uh, maybe even drop down the shield a bit here to begin with get things leveled out a bit work our way around Obviously we don't really need to start looking too much at the compaction at this stage because um, there's going to be lots more still coming into this pit. Um, I want to make sure we don't end up spilling it out over the edges of the pit, but at the same time I want to make sure we get it reasonably filled to the back or create a smooth enough ramp that when the forage wagon is coming back in it's not going to be too much of a problem to drive up and, and tip further up the bank here again so that we basically end up filling the pit as much as we can from the back and working our way out gradually so actually it's not taking too many attempts here and I haven't really started lowering the blade yet but we might just do that over here see if we can push a bit more up against the wall like so and then maybe a little bit here in the middle. Yeah, that's looking okay, I think. 
Maybe if we can get a bit over in the corner here, although I'm digging in a bit too much now. Good, good, good. I think we are pretty much ready for the next load coming in. So it'll probably be another sort of every two or three loads we come in and do some more leveling and driving on top of it. So back out in the field, um, getting ready on, on the fifth load, but I think generally by now you you get the idea of how this is working. Uh, put the follow me back on, get up to the front tractor, do some more cutting, that way we don't run any risk of um, stuff turning to hay um, during the operation. We're just always collecting freshly cut grass. So, we're going to crack on uh, for a bit here, and um, we'll see how we get on, but um, we'll get back to the video here once we, we got a fair bit more in the pit. So it's getting towards the end of the afternoon, uh, so you can see we've still got plenty of grass to go. We're bringing in, well, we're definitely over half half a million litres into the pit by now, and um, a good deal more to, to go still. But um, as I mentioned, I put on the uh, increased fuel consumption mod, and 
I've mainly been keeping an eye on the 8R here because that's the one that's running back and forth uh, to the pit all the time. But it's obviously got quite a large tank as well. So I've just realized that the 6R is sitting up in the field. Uh, it's actually starting to run dangerously low on, on fuel. So once we have dropped in this load into the pit, um, I think everybody's just going to have a, a short break from the field work. Um, we are going to probably refuel the ADAR. We've got fuel um, here on the farm already, but we might need to start thinking about topping that up as well. We're going to bring down the 6R as well, um, and then get this mighty pit leveled off a bit more. As you can see, it's growing steadily. Um, and then once the two John Deere's uh, have been refueled, the T7 is still doing fine, still about just over halfway full at least. So once we've got those uh, refueled, um, operations are more or less ready to resume. But first, uh, let's dump in some more grass. But um, we'll pull over here and uh, get the 8 hour refueled switch off the engine while we're doing that obviously. So we still got near 6,000 litres of diesel on the tank uh, here so that's not too bad. So fully refueled. We're gonna bring the 8R back out into the field but we're gonna have to um, refuel the 6R as well um, before we can get everything going again and I'm just gonna pick up the forage trail up here and uh, we'll just check on how the leveling is going uh, at the same time as well. Looks like we've got some clouds moving in pretty quickly. So although we do need to refuel, we also need to get on with uh, the job pretty quickly now. Just in case we start seeing any major clouds close in for rain. So the 6i here is a little bit boxed in, but we are, we're gonna drop off the liner. Um, and then now hopefully as you can see, the fuel gauge is, is really quite low here. There should be plenty to make it down to the farm. Uh, just driving without pulling any weight or anything like that. But um, yeah, obviously, because I've been using Follow Me, um, this tractor has basically been sitting in the middle, um, waiting uh, when we're doing the runs. Um, the tractor in the front and I was driving uh, would automatically switch off after a little while of nobody's sitting in it um, but the worker here has kept this going it's obviously also meant that we've been we've been paying for a worker <laughs> to sit around waiting uh, while we're dropping off silos but that's fair enough that's that's reasonably reflective of the fact that you would have some guys working out in the field uh, while others were doing the runs perhaps not the most efficient way of doing things but um, we're still learning uh, how to run this farm as well and I don't think it has damage the economy too bad but we have spent uh, a good couple of thousand today on, uh, on on workers for for getting the salvage work done but as you can see the pit is also filling in nicely so we'll uh, get some fuel into this thing now we can get back to the job and everybody's had um, a chance to have a quick sandwich up in the field while I've been uh, refueling tractors here so they should be good to keep going uh, even if it means going a bit into the night to finish this job because there's still quite a lot of grass to get through okay 
we are back and I was wrong the tractors are getting dirty as you can see um, I've lost count on what load we're on but it's coming up to nine o'clock in the evening and um, I think if not this load then the next load is essentially gonna be our last ones We've got a little bit of a strip going up the length of the field here so we are getting close but it is also getting fairly late and these machines have been basically running since nine o'clock this morning so that's like full 12 hours of uh, carting silage into our pit so I realize in this episode we haven't really been doing any other jobs but um, this on the other hand was a very large job that really needed doing but at least we're starting to get to a point where it feels like we're approaching the, the end of the work and uh, the first sideways clamp is actually getting quite full um, I hadn't realized we were going to get quite as much as this out of the field I'm really impressed with the yield it's far far higher than, um, than what we got when we um, made hay um, we got about just short of 400,000 liters of, of hay out of the field but in terms of pure grass silage we are well over well we're over 600,000 close to 700,000 liters by now so um, it's it's been a very substantial increase by putting that slurry down on our field that's done a really good job for us when well, it did get a bit of fertilizer in some areas as well but um, by and large the combination giving it a little growth boost has, has done wonders I don't know if you noticed, but there's there's a nice feature on, on um, here on Isol that's all that I hadn't actually realized until we were starting to work here at night. But um, we've got nice big floodlights coming in over the silage pits, which is coming in really handy. Um, although I had bought the floodlight trailer, so worst case scenario, I guess we could have used that. But instead, we actually have built-in lights right here at the pit, which I think is a really great feature. Back out in the field, half past nine in the evening. And here we go, the very last strip for today. That's been a big job for everybody, but um, it's gone well. I'm pleased to say. Um, the follow me tray, I'm I know that you could probably do this even quicker or easier with um, course play but I'm not quite there yet and frankly I, I quite enjoyed this uh, I wouldn't have enjoyed it if I had to do every single pass in every single machine but um, nonetheless it's been a good day's work in the field here so I think we'll um, get all the machinery switched off and get all the tractors back to the farm and we'll get the last bit of silage unloaded and see if we can get the uh, bunk uh, covered up. So last load of grass is going into the pit now. Um, we have got a lot of silage. I'm even now thinking about whether we need, well, need to or we, we could. Um, expand the cows. Wow, these floodlights are really efficient here at night. Um, I'm thinking maybe I should have tried out my uh, mobile one up along the shed there instead. But um, I'm sure we'll get an opportunity to do that around harvest time up again, up around our newly bit, uh, built um, bale stack. Um, and we're not too far away from that. This is late summer and uh, this was really 
an opportunity. I thought we might have done this on the other side of, of harvest, but um, I'm glad we got it done now um, because I think given this kind of yield figure on, on a grass field, um, it's, it's going to be um, a busy old harvest here on Iasold. But John Deere, even if it's going to end up blocking the gate here, can, um, can be left here and uh, we're simply going to get the T7 to do the last bit of leveling. And um, I'll turn on the help screen just so that um, you can actually follow and see how much uh, is in there and what our compaction level is. So as you drive in, you can see we have 800 and, well, now I've scooped up a little bit here, uh, 827,000 liters. And that's just from that one, one field. There was nothing in this pit when we started. So that is really impressive. Um, our compaction is actually pretty good already, but I would like to smooth it off a bit up here on the top if I could just so it looks a bit neater as well. Uh, it doesn't have to be absolutely picture perfect, but just so it's not completely ridiculous. It's actually looking okay. It's relatively smooth already. We haven't really dropped too much um, outside the pit. I don't know if we can. I think there's a little bit of grass that's been left out there that we can push that in. I think we managed to, to get that in with the blade there. So that's good. So it is reading 100% compaction now. So the rest is just really a bit of cosmetic. Interesting enough it went back down to 99. I think that's as the blade picks up a little bit and drops it back in again. Uh, compaction does drop down a little bit, so that's not a problem. Let's see if we can get a little bit along the edge here. Smooth that up as well. Excellent. And that, if we can get it to go to 100% again, we can. Good. There we have it. Very large pile <laughs> of silage. And we're going to cover it up now. Now that's going to take a good while, but we have quite a bit of silage over here already. We have about, well, not in comparison, but we have 29,000 liters sitting here. We have 10,000 liters of hay plus a whole stack of bales up in that shed. So the only thing we're really missing to start making some more uh, mixed feed is some straw. But here we are. We got a whole big pile of silage made today and um, with some dirty tractors, uh, a late evening, some tired workers, it is time to say thank you very much for this episode. If you do enjoy the ISOL series, please do consider hitting the like button or subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. But for now, it's thank you very much from Overcourt Gaming. See you again soon.